Hi everyone. I'm here with a real game changer in ophthalmology, Dr. Daniel Ting. Yeah. He's been working with artificial intelligence and is really starting to break through into the industry how it can actually be used. Welcome to the show, Daniel. How Thank have you. you been? I'm good, I'm good. Thanks for having me here. Uh, I'd like to start by asking, how did you happen to become the Standing Committee Chair for AI and Digital Innovation at APAO? Oh, that, thanks for asking me that. Uh, first, I, I think um, a big thank you goes to uh, Professor Dennis Lam. We thought uh, this is uh, quite timely to have this uh, standing committee set up. I have uh, created this committee, of course, in his guidance. Um, and this committee uh, consists of two uh, different uh, uh, members. One is the advisory members and one is the exco members. We have about uh, around 10 countries. Wow. Yeah, exactly. And uh, with uh, uh, coming from cornea, glaucoma, retina, and, uh, and also like some digital and technical experts uh, in the field. Yeah, so I, we have uh, quite a good team. Yeah. Excellent, very diverse as well. And yeah. I think it's very ap applicable in so many different fields of ophthalmology. Yeah. But could you help us cut through the clutter to what is really important about it in our industry? Let's start with uh, AI as a, you know, What's the what's AI? What's machine learning? And what's deep learning? Right. I think these are these are the three um, descriptions and terminologies that are commonly used these days. And AI is actually nothing new. I mean, it was coined back in the 1950s. Mm -hmm. Machine learning term has been coined back in 1980s. So 30 years um, after artificial intelligence is considered a subset of mm -hmm. the artificial intelligence. It means that the computer should have the ability to learn without being explicitly programmed. Right. And of course, um, deep learning, is, which is the new kids in the block, that uh, has come into fruition uh, because of the advent of the supercomputers. Mm -hmm. right? I'm sure like uh, people actually play games or uh, gaming, you need a lot of the very uh, good GPU cards and for this sure. is exactly what GPU is for. And I assume through the Singapore National Eye Center, you yeah. have some machinery and computing that is able to handle that level of data, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I've seen that now that there is some open source access where you know, people like myself who do not have a supercomputer, yeah. but we can access that hardware. That's is right. that something that you think in ophthalmology will happen as well? That's, 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 that's a very important question. So in other words, how do we democratize the infrastructure mm. or like the resources to the, you know, to the general population? So if you look at a lot of the tech companies these days, they, they do run like the cloud services mm. and the GPU in fact could be deployed on the cloud. So it means that if you're in Hawaii, if you're or UK or Singapore or US, you could actually access the cloud. So long as you sign up, um, you know, you pay the subscription fees, you can actually sign up everywhere. In fact, all these uh, cloud computing resources are extremely powerful. The committee, uh, people have been also publishing a lot of their codes on the public mm -hmm. domain. So it actually, uh, we call it open source. So basically when you open source your AI algorithm uh, on the public domain, it means that the there are more people who have the opportunity to use it, to test it, and of course to optimize and enhance it. I mean, this is very important for AI, which depends upon data sets. Yeah. And the more users that are, are using it, the yeah. more data it has to learn from. Exactly. And that brings me to my next question. Can you tell us the importance of international cooperation in collecting and using these data sets? Another very important point. Across the world, there's a different population will reside in different parts of the world. And when you actually build AI uh, using, say, uh, a predominantly Caucasian uh, data sets, when you want to use it on the Asian, um, you know, the eyes, how is it? How generalizable is this algorithm? So this is something that is really important for the community to come together to start, uh, you know, sharing the data. We need to actually preserve the patient's confidentiality stuff. We need to actually find a way how to actually collaborate and share data without needing to review the identity. What are the barriers that AI will face in order to be applicable to ophthalmology and other medical fields? Yeah. And do things like ethics come into play? Yeah. So um, for AI to be safely deployed, and we, we, we need the governance, and we need the safety, and we also need to have rigorous uh, evaluation and, and things like that. And of course, for AI to be deployed, you also do need a very robust IT infrastructures, mm -hmm. and uh, sometimes it actually can be quite costly. Yeah, so I think the cost would be the number one factor that I would say uh, one have to consider if mm -hmm. you were to actually use the AI. And of course, whether the AI could uh, satisfy or could fit your uh, intended use, 
this is something that as a clinician or as a PI, you, you do need to actually evaluate it uh, in a very uh, rigorous manner because ultimately, if you actually um, miss a patient's, uh, you know, the diagnosis because you're using AI, and if AI is uh, giving you the wrong answer, and you may end up patients losing their vision. Apart from the regulatory uh, side of things, the data ownership, data privacy, I think is always a, a, a challenge, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, we talk about the techniques that we could use to uh, facilitate the international collaboration, but some of the, some, sometimes uh, some specific countries may not even have the infrastructure for us to uh, sure. deploy such uh, techniques. So data sharing, data privacy, uh, I think uh, increasingly will uh, become a challenge as well as you want to actually uh, you know, use more AI. Uh, to do stuff. So I'm sure like everyone is talking about chat GPT uh, these days, right? It's, a, it's a, like a hot topic in the town and chat GPT is actually creating articles and how is it going to change the media, uh, the industry? How is it going to change the education industry? Uh, the challenge, I think, uh, would actually become uh, an issue, I think, if we don't actually know how to properly, uh, you know, uh, drive this technology forward. I'm, I'm very excited to see how this space will evolve in the next uh, 12 months to 24 months time because I think a lot of people are looking into this space. A lot of interest has uh, gone in. And I think really these standing committees like this one at APAO that you're yeah. part of and helped create is going to be really important in helping to drive that kind of policy and yeah. influence the people that can make those decisions and utilize it properly. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. And we talked about the data standards, the image uh, standards between say US, and between the different vendors, uh, different vendors would have different ways to store data. How do you make like the data sharing? A uniform. Like the, um, yeah, exactly. More interoperable. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is the term that we use uh, uh, technically. Um, how do we make the different system to talk to each other like more seeming, uh, seamlessly? This is something that I think is really important to actually get uh, the standardization uh, effort mm -hmm. going. So, I mean, uh, this is one of the things that uh, the community is uh, highly interested to do. Right now, we're trying to see how Asia Pacific side um, of the house could actually help, uh, you know, uh, to do this, yeah. Wow. Well, I'm really glad to meet people like yourself who are making that change. Yeah. yeah. Daniel, thank you so much for your time. Thanks Enjoy very much. Enjoy the rest of the show. Yeah. And we'll see you again soon. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thanks. Thanks.